William, grab the microphone. Grab the microphone right there. Okay. Reason why I wanted you to show up is um, markets are going crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, we ended yesterday's market uh, up almost 2,000 points. It was interesting because yeah, one, of, one of the metal guys calls me up because Trump's about to talk. He's going to shut down the government and the markets are going to fail. I'm going to short the market. Oh, yesterday's. Yes. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> but it was a ton of great insight for him to do it. Obviously, no one knows the markets. No one knows the space you're in, which is the crypto market, not even you. That's correct. But something happened that was really interesting this week. First, Bitcoin went up and then <laughs> tanked. So it's not like gold. Most people think you buy gold because gold's more, uh, more durable during times of crisis, which is necessarily the case right now. But Bitcoin and crypto reacted very strangely in the last couple of weeks. Bitcoin reacted just like gold. Did it? Yes, it Explain. did. Explain. Okay, I will. Uh, so we usually, a lot of us in crypto, I would say we, we hope that good. Okay. I would say we typically hope that Bitcoin is uncorrelated to all the other major traded assets in the world. You know, the equity markets, the bond markets, real estate markets, and so on. Well, you never can really test that until you have massive movement in one of those categories and you look at Bitcoin. Well, for the last at least three years, Bitcoin has been almost perfectly uncorrelated with the S&P 500, with gold. Uncorrelated meaning uh, if the S&P goes up or down, Bitcoin moves randomly according to that movement. And a lot of people, because we have what we call recency biases, we see something go up and then we notice Bitcoin maybe went up that day and say, oh, it's correlated or down and so on. But if you look at the data, the daily data, you'll see it's uncorrelated. Now, in the past few weeks, maybe, and certainly in the past week, there's been greater correlation. But that's for things that, like the coronavirus, is a black swan that we can't do anything about. Uh, people are needing cash or they're worried about hoarding cash. Uh, there was $80 billion of money put into the money market system uh, in the past couple of days. There's now $4 trillion of cash sitting in money markets, which is basically in bank accounts. Why is that money there? Because people have sold their riskier assets and basically anything that's not a stock or, or uh, cash is considered risky. So you think about gold. Gold is that safe haven that you never have to worry about. So why did gold go down as people were selling their risky assets? And the reason is because of this, this toxin that uh, permeates everything in modern finance, and that's leverage, meaning you borrow in order to buy stuff. Uh, the last financial crisis, of course, was about consumers borrowing and not being able to pay businesses, banks, and it's gotten better, clearly, because we're not talking about a financial crisis right now, but what is not great is people can still borrow a lot. Now, in crypto, uh, a lot of you may not know this, but in the past probably year, borrowing has been possible. And when I say borrowing, crazy borrowing, 50 times the value of your Bitcoin. So people were feeling pretty good about Bitcoin. In fact, they were sort of flocking into it because they were thinking, ah, coronavirus and such, things are getting risky. I'll go into Bitcoin because it's uncorrelated but they were going into it with leverage. They were borrowing money. And the way uh, the systems work is you're allowed to borrow, but if the asset you hold like Bitcoin drops a bit, uh, they seize your Bitcoin and they sell it on what we call the spot market. And the spot market is just uh, uh, buyers of last resort on an exchange right now. And they don't do it in a nice fashion. They don't like drip it out so that, you know, you're just selling a little. They just dump the whole thing. So what happened was 
everybody started to get closed out. Uh, we call it, uh, you know, like leverage washouts. As they got washed out, the people running those exchanges dumped the Bitcoin, which caused it to drop to the next level where more people got washed out and so on. Now, my thinking while that was going on was it'll probably stop around 5,000. It actually stopped at around 4,000 or so. I said 5,000 because a very important floor for Bitcoin is what does it cost to actually mine a Bitcoin? And it costs more than 5,000. Depending on your equipment, it could cost 6,000, but most people don't mine for under 5,000. So once it becomes cheaper to actually buy it on the open market versus mining, what you would start to see is the miners themselves buying, which would create a level of support. So because so many people were selling, we got to a point where it actually went past that down to 4,000. Uh, but I'll tell you, then everybody, including myself, started to rush in. Within 30 minutes, it went from 4,000 to 5,500. Wow. And right now, I would say it's about, depending on the exchange, about 5,500, which is, uh, depending on your equipment, roughly what it costs to mine a Bitcoin. So you could kind of call that a safe floor if there's such a thing. Hey, got a question. This one's coming from Griff. He says, uh, with the Fed bond buyback, we saw $1.5 trillion of liquidity added to the market this week. Yeah. Who benefits from this liquidity? And as the Fed's announced an even more, or even more, is there a risk of inflation? Yeah, let me, let me take the first part. You know what? I think I'm pretty sophisticated, I would say, in the financial markets. Uh, when it gets to the credit markets, overnight credit markets, uh, uh, reverse repos, swaps, uh, futures, treasury futures, it is so damn confusing. It's yeah. really hard to understand. Uh, but when, to the direct question, who benefits from the Fed uh, putting cash into the economy? Man, everybody on earth benefits. The economy is so complicated. It, it is like an organism. It's, it's, it's almost impossible for anybody to understand. Uh, you know, the Fed this week did something where they allowed Japanese and other central banks to uh, sell yen and borrow dollars. And lots of people want dollars right now. It is the reserve currency of the world. Well, if you're a Japanese company or a Japanese bank, you might want dollars, but you don't have them. What do you do? Well, the Fed, the U.S. Fed, actually makes it easy for these guys to sell their local currency and buy dollars. Well, it didn't work this time, though, because I think social media being what it is, mm -hmm. Uh, when you do that, it's sort of a tell that you're desperate. And so I think a lot of the banks were worried that, oh, people are going to say we're selling our local currency so and buying dollars. Back. So the Fed responded very fast. And I think what it's going to do, it's going to start saying to its, to its local federal reserves of the rest of the world, hey, you guys need to educate these guys that it's, uh, it's not a bad sign. It's actually a prudent sign, right? Come and and then to, to the point of inflation, this is the great puzzle of modern economics. What is supposed to happen when you debase your currency? So you had a few shekels and now you have a few more shekels. The value of each shekel is less. This is like grounded in, in all economics. And yet what happened when we produced in 2008 financial crisis, eight trillion more US dollars? The dollar strengthened. And it's because uh, the dollar relative to other currencies was the place of last resort. So we saw what, what happens in inflation is your currency becomes less valuable. So to attract people to buy it, you raise the interest rate. What did we do? We lowered the interest rate and people still wanted the dollar. So what is going to happen when the fed starts to really print more money and, uh, Maybe it's 10 trillion, I don't know. Uh, 
it could be finally we see inflation, which we haven't seen, you know, since I've been an adult. Uh, and the only reason I could see it maybe happening this time is in the past, these were not global problems, or if they were, they were more pronounced in some parts of the economy and less than others. The Chinese didn't do that bad in the financial crisis, so they were able to buy dollars and prop it up. But what happens if the entire world is trying to uh, borrow? Who are they borrowing from? Well, it could be a beggar thy neighbor problem where everybody starts to need to raise rates. When we know if you raise rates, you cause people not to spend money, which clamps down the economy. So right now, as you look at the other currencies, obviously, uh, the euro has tried to become the dominant. Now the yuan is trying to become the dominant. They, yeah, there's no choice. There's, just no no, choice. there's nothing. It's like being an altcoin compared to Bitcoin, right? No matter what you say, you're still not Bitcoin. it's the granddaddy. When you're fearful, what do you do? You go to that thing that you know has worked in the past. That's doing, the dollar. Are you buying any stocks? I'm not buying stocks just yet. And I will at some point buy Enron. the S&P calls. So uh, it's, a, it's a much better way to go, oh, yeah. I would say right now, is to, to buy the, the calls. Now, the puts, uh, the S&P puts, which is a way to short the market, uh, those things a couple of days ago, it was, it was true insanity. Usually with an option, which is a right to buy something in the future, if that thing drops down in value, good for you. Uh, Usually, you know, the markets are working. They're not dislocated. Uh, the, the premiums you were paying for options, and usually options go out a year or three months. Uh, when I was talking to my broker, I was asking about what's the price of the options, right? The S&P. And he quoted me like one and a half percent of the value. Uh, and I'm like, okay, what's the term on that? And he said, that term is for tomorrow. <laughs> it's crazy. So to put that in perspective, usually you would pay, I don't know, uh, 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 four or five percent. Uh, interest rate on these things, you were paying a year annualized. You're, you were paying 700%. So extreme fear. And uh, 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 so they're there, but that's reversed now, right? These things do reverse just like that. I, I think what we, what, what scares people, including me, is uh, uh, I'm hearing best estimates for Q2 of a 4% decline in GDP, right? Yeah. So whatever. Now, that to me Best is, estimate. yeah, but here, I don't know what the answer is, but I will tell you this, it makes absolutely no sense to me because it appears the entire economy is shutting down. Well, so you're telling me next quarter, everyone is going to be doing everything 96% at the old level they were at. Of course not. They're only going to cut back 4%. I mean, we just heard that travel is dead, and that's 10% of the economy. It, so there's a side of me that says, well, wouldn't it drop then 50%, 60%? But, uh, uh, but it appears the best guesses are 4%. But I fear it's going to be greater than that. We, you know, we will we'll see. Uh, there's lots of questions, and I guess we're going to have to cover it another time. Uh, people think you're smart, apparently. Well, this is uncharted territory. You keep hearing it. I mean, when Warren that Buffett... That was a joke. Oh, when Warren Buffett <laughs> says, hey, uh, I've been... I'm 89 years old, never seen anything like this. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll finish with this. You've all heard of the black swan, right? That's the, that's the bad event that you... No one anticipated, right? So, uh, curiously we kind of should have anticipated pandemics, but we couldn't have anticipated this bizarre mass hysteria, right? I mean, it's, I've never seen anything like it. We've had SARS and MERS and H1Z1 and, and swine flu, but this time for whatever reason it caught. But I've always told my companies that we can survive a black swan. It, you, most of the times you can if you don't panic. The issue is when you get multiple black swans. And, and they tend to come like that. Well, what Warren Buffett was talking about was a black swan, which is this pandemic, and then the Russians and the Saudis decide to go into the an oil, oil war. Yeah. And, you know, guys, it's a crazy thing, but oil 
at a very, very high price, everybody can deal with it economically. Nobody can deal with low priced oil. It's just like we're, we're kind of, our economies expected to be a certain price. And when deflation occurs, deflation, the only thing capitalism can't deal with. And when massive deflation occurs, uh, uh, everything breaks down. So we had two very big black swans. And I would call what we're doing now teetering. Mm. So my, my deep dark fear would be one more black swan. Something else. What could that I don't know, but I, I well, don't even want to put it you into the consciousness you know what's crazy? of the world. <laughs> They're still fighting in the Middle East, right? There's still issues going out there. Maybe that's another black swan. Yeah. Who knows? So right now we are managing, but if we were, which of course by the nature of the black swan, you can't anticipate it, right? No, because can't. if you could, it wouldn't be one. Uh, but I'm, uh, but what you should do is this. I put, this is an analogy I would use. You're flying over the, you leave New York flying to over Atlantic and you got three engines. First one goes out. Well, you got two more, right? That's your first black swan. The second one goes out. Now shit, it's the fan. <laughs> what you would do in that situation is you would say, am I more than halfway to London? If not, I turn back. And cause when the next one goes out, you're done. So my view would be any insurance policies, whatever you want to call them, the Fed's actions and the states doing what they're doing, the world doing what they're doing, those are now done. So we can't handle one more. So to the extent you're exposed in a way you can't tolerate, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely time to say, well, since I can't absorb any more risk, I need to be very prudent. And you have to decide what that is, yeah. you know, how much more you can, you can actually afford. We're hoping it all works out. Let's give it for William quickly. All right, William, that was awesome.